no secret there's an ever-widening wealth gap in this country between the haves and the have-nots. So which side of the divide are you on? And how do you bridge that gap and gain greater economic control, freedom, and security for yourself and those around you? Welcome to Closing the Wealth Gap, the only show with weekly workable tips, ideas, and suggestions for average income earners like you on how to regain control of your financial future. From the man who's helped millions, Tyrone French. Hey, Tyrone. Oh, thanks a lot, buddy. How are you doing today? I am uh, I'm looking at the topic for today, and, and I'm shaking. It's a little too close to home here. This is you're gonna you're gonna. And touch. that's why I'm asking. That's why I'm asking how you're doing because yeah. I, I see it. In, I mean, I've been around you enough to where you're ready to get started with this. <laughs> this is we got a great topic. You got a great topic, and we have and a, a great, great guest. guest and a great guest. Who'd you bring? I brought in Don Marie. Don Marie is pretty much a serial entrepreneur, and she's been successful on corporate levels and so many different levels. But she also has her has, has had her shares of setbacks and disappointments but she's been able to rise above all of those circumstances she has a beautiful personality uh great story and when i heard her story it's like wow we have to have you on the air because she's representing a segment of a population that we really don't talk about and it's women that find themselves uh for uh, just impoverished in their golden years and it's a cause and effect relationship based on uh when you look at women in the workplace today they don't make as as much as men do there's an income disparity there where we know about it but we don't look at the long term effect of a, of a of a woman doing the same job as a man and being paid less we don't consider the ramifications of Social Security on the back end, whereas she made less money, but she had less money to pay into Social Security, so therefore she has less income coming in. Uh, 401k, she's making less money, so she has less money to contribute to her 401k. And by the way, Paul, a lot of women are the caregivers. So a lot of times they're taking care of older parents and they're taking care of kids or, or grandkids. Tyrone, so they're doing more with less. I could tell you a dozen stories that hit very close to my home. Uh, my late aunt, who we've talked about in the show, who never got married, but ended up but took care of her mother and then her brother and then my mother uh, and ended up with nobody to take care of her but me. You know, she right, didn't make right. much money. She didn't have retirement she lived she eked out a living those last 10 20 years of her life here and it was horrible to watch part of it was her own fault she hadn't planned for it or thought about it because she was busy taking care of others part of it was what i kiddingly call if you've ever seen the old movie streetcar named desire the blanche dubois syndrome she relied mm. on the kindness of strangers she relied on others to help her and she right. expected there to be somebody there but in the end there really wasn't. I, I was there to help her, but there wasn't anybody else. And right. it was horrible to watch that. You know, she she somehow lit, grew up in an age where women w took care of others and then somehow expected somebody to take care of them, a husband, a son or whatever. And for many of us, I don't think that's going to be the reality. For many of them, it is not the reality. And it's a it's a conditioned mindset. Um, matter of fact, a lot of women feel kind of awkward if they're not assuming that role as far as the caregiver and they spread themselves really thin and like you said this a lot of times there's when they fall there's no safety net and so when you look at the numbers uh, a lot of women in their golden in their golden years they find themselves alone sometimes it's, it's due to the death of a spouse or uh, or divorce but yeah. they find themselves alone and with that one income it's not enough well, it's just not enough. And there's no income. You know, how many people aren't going to go into the golden years with any retirement? They haven't saved anything. They're not getting a pension. It's just Social Security they're going to live on. True. But what we're, what, but even the, even when you look at the numbers, though, it's, it, going back to men, the numbers suggest that when, let's say you have an older couple, and when that man, when, they, when that couple divorce, a lot of times the woman will find herself going into on the, the poverty side Whereas that man will find themselves going to the prosperity side. Why? Single, uh, older, 
wiser, experienced. A lot of companies are looking for that based on the training versus the, the flip side of the coin. An older woman, they look at her, they, they discount her experience based on, um, you know, is, is this going to be an asset or is it going to be a liability? And then if she does get the job, come to find out she's paying, she's making less money than somebody that she's, that she's equal to. Well, let's stop having two guys talk about this. Let's bring in your guest. She knows uh, firsthand. Join us. Welcome to the show. What have you seen? <laughs> Doug, give us your story. Well, I'm, my story has been that uh, I was not encouraged to go to uh, college. Just wasn't an option for our family. So straight out of high school, um, went into the workforce and was able to just um, rank up and excel and do really well. Um, I was very excited at the time about how I was able to leap, uh, leapfrog through the early years of my career. But I realized once I got into my late 30s that I was hitting a glass ceiling and that I got a lot of really fancy titles, and, but I was never able to make the same kind of money that a male is, that did not have a college education in my profession did. And so um, it, I completely understand what you guys are saying. And I'm in my early 50s now, and um, I'm not married. I don't have children, and I have dedicated the last 10 years of my life to heart-centered service. And so uh, I see myself as exactly what you're talking about. If I don't get my ducks in a row and plan for my future, then there's going to be some issues. Right. But Don, you, you actually can't, you had this aha moment. Ex ex yes. What, what was it that predicated that aha moment for you? So for me, it all started in the crash of 2008 when uh, the universe gave me the boot from my nine to five, which uh, I, I wanted that security and I wanted that steady paycheck. And I fell into doing self-employment and going into alternative medicine kind of work. Okay. And that was good for me for a while, but I realized that with self-employment, it's almost essentially the same thing as that nine to five. You're still a slave. There's no residual income component because if you don't work, then you're not going to get paid. Right. And about um, in, new, in it was November 2016, all of a sudden my self-employment income just dipped down really low. I'm used to an ebb and flow, but this went really low and stayed down. And um, so I started being open to opportunity. And lo and behold, someone showed up to share with me an opportunity um, that is a network marketing opportunity with gold and silver. And at first, uh, I wasn't really quite ready for a network marketing company. But as I learned more and more about this company, I was just blown away. And it has given me an opportunity to have exactly what I need, that residual income to come in and to be able to rank up no matter what my gender is, no matter what my education level is, or race, religion. I call the shots on how much I want to make. And um, network marketing, I'll just say this, um, Regardless of the vehicle that you choose, women excel in network marketing, and they can go beyond uh, men in this industry. And so well, that's something I found. Well, let me let me let me stop you there because a lot of people they would look at and, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to focus on one particular company. I'm just, I'm talking about I'm just going to talk about the, the business model in general. A lot okay. of people in the United States are conditioned to think that to, to have a side hustle, that they need to have a side job. So they're jumping out of the frying pan into another frying pan instead of taking a look at, well, maybe I need, just like the, the American dream is business ownership. But I don't have $50,000 or $100,000 to start a franchise. So network marketing based on that business model will offer people the chance to start their own business uh, at a reasonable price. And you can start part time while you're still working at your nine to five or transitioning from one, one career to the next. So I want you to elaborate just based on 
um, why is it that that so many people they, they it's like network marketing marketing is a, is a poo poo. It's it's almost like a uh, um, for lack of a better word, it's just something that 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 was seen beneath a lot of people. But what we're finding based on those numbers is network marketing is actually lifting a lot of people out of poverty. And like you said, advancing people uh, to the next level. So explain to me just in your own words, why do you think there's such a stigma against people starting their own business using a network marketing vehicle? Well, first of all, we've all been taught um, to be brainwashed that the nine to five is the safe bet and that we should all go that route. And it's too risky to have your own business and let alone go into network marketing. And then the first generation of network marketing, they didn't know that what they were doing and they overpromised and they loaded people up on product and the qualifiers were too high and there was just a lot of problems with it. But just like with everything, as we move through it, we get rid of the negative and we create something and expand on it and make it the best that we can. And one of my right. favorite authors is Robert Kiyosaki and he yes. has the book Business of the 21st Century. Yes, and I'm familiar with that book. Exclusively, yeah, about network marketing. Amazing. And in that book, and as well as a different another book that he writes, he talks about the quadrants. And there's four quadrants being an employee, which most of us have been um, brainwashed, that's the way, that's the safe way. And then S quadrant is self-employed. Um, and then the two next ones are B for business owners, like over 500 employees. So we're not talking small business owners. And then I is for investors. And okay. um, network marketing, actually, because it is a process of duplication, it's not, uh, you're not trading dollar for time. You are building a network. And we see in social media, networks in this day and age are huge. It's all about networks. It's all about word of mouth advertising and um, network marketing is creating that network and they believe it's so much bigger than people realize around the world other countries have adopted it even more than the United States and as right. time goes on more and more people will be doing network marketing and will just be sharing it's not a hard sell it's just sharing something that you believe in and that allows you to well, duplicate your efforts Right. But hey, Don, let me let me the one thing that I got from Robert Kiyosaki and the, the, the book, uh, The Business of the 21st Century, is that it's a way to create wealth. And what I mean by wealth is a way to create a, a passive income stream that you're not working for, meaning that you're you're building a network. And I've been told that that wealthy people build networks. Uh, there was a, a guy, his name was, I guess, it was, uh, Robin Leach. And what he would do is he would interview all these wealthy people. And somebody asked him, well, you know, you're interviewing all these people, but have you ever seen them actually go to work? And he had to confess, no, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see them go to work. Why? Because they're using their network to create the income that's paying their expenses and their liabilities. So what we have to really do is, is find another definition or redefine the word wealth. People think that wealth is associated to rich people and that you must you must have millions of dollars. No, you're wealthy when your passive income exceeds your liabilities and expenses. That could be three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollars a month. See, I work. The name of this show is, is Closing the Wealth Gap. Uh, wow. I'm an insurance agent by by profession and by trade. So I put annuities, which are cash flows, in, in place for my clients so that they will not be able to outlive their income. But it's the same thing with network marketing. If you have a solid network, you have an income that's coming in for the rest of your life that you cannot outlive because if it's structured properly, when you pass away, that income will continue to flow to your your spouse or your kids or whatever. So again, people, when we say network marketing, sometimes people get into the technical aspect of it instead of getting into the 
the, the, the rubber to the road aspect of what it actually does. And so I want you to kind of talk about as far as I know that you know, that you've excelled in network marketing. Give me some of the benefits as to how it's actually helped you uh, in, in, in your pursuit as far as, like I said, getting to the next level. In my early 50s, have a career transition, um, and network marketing has really helped me to really develop leadership in personal development. So okay. in my last um, career that I'm phasing out of, which I absolutely still love, and I'll continue to do it, but what's beautiful is the network marketing will be able to fund my passions and dreams. So as I'm phasing out of one career to the other one, I'll still be able to do my philanthropic work through the residual income that network marketing offers. So that's amazing. Well, and you know what? I like, I like what you just said. I like what you just said about the transitioning because a lot of women are transitioning from um, raising or having young kids and raising those kids to young adults to trans transitioning into now, what am I going to do next? Uh, what am I going to do when they like they go through a divorce? What am I going to do to replace this income? Because what I'm finding and just looking at the stories is, is, is a lot of times people will stay in bad relationships just for financial reasons. And that's the absolute wrong reason to stay in a relationship. So if you have an alternative to whereas, wow, you know what? Now I'm not a slave to this relationship. I'm not a slave to my wages that, that, that corporate America is, 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 you know, giving me that's not even, they're giving me a, a ways to where I, I have enough money uh, to survive, but I don't have enough money to thrive. And I'm always coming up short because I'm living, now I'm living payday to payday, but I don't know what I need to do to transition. So there's a lot of women that will hear this based on what you just said, that they are transitioning and network marketing is an, is an alternative uh, to, to bridge that gap. They may not stay in network marketing. Um, they may just this stay in network marketing for a season just to get from point A to point B. So again, just kind of elaborate this based on uh, your own experience with network marketing as to some of the people that you know personally that this vehicle has it helped? It really helps with personal development. So I know from transitioning from my past um, um, career to this, that I spent a lot of money in classes to do my career. In mm. network marketing, it's built in. The leadership, the personal development, you come as you are. No special skill set is required. We all have different gifts and talents that we bring to, to the table. And it's not an individual game anymore. It is a team game. And you help others. And it's your success makes my success possible. And that's the philosophy that really resonates with my heart. And so as I'm stepping in and learning leadership skills, I thought I had leadership skills. Well, I didn't. What I thought I had was not nowhere near what I have now. And it's all part of network marketing is that mentorship is learning, being coachable, and then as you rise up, you do that. You take people under your wings, and you help them earn their stripes and make their way up. And it's not about getting to the top and not working and everyone else doing it for you, because I know that that's the big fallacy. You asked earlier about the stigma. The stigma, there are so many negatives that are, are said about network marketing, you know, and they're all false, or it was because of that first generation. But if you don't work, if you don't put an effort in, it's not just going to show up for you. So you need to think of it as like a college or a school. You put your time in as you choose whatever number of hours per week you choose to do it. No one's going to require you to put in 60 hours, 80 hours. You just want to do 10, whatever your lifestyle looks like. You put that time in and you're developing these abilities and you don't even know how to, right. you don't even need to know how to be a salesperson because it's well, the people that excel are the ones that have a real um, human story. 
Hey, Don, I tell you what, I'm going to cut you off right now because I, I see Paul. Paul's just dying to get in here. He's I got to ask, <laughs> I gotta ask a couple of questions. I'm fascinated <laughs> by this discussion here. So I'll give you a perfect example. So my wife just got forced into retirement. She wasn't ready, but her job got eliminated at a bank, and she's in her mid-60s, and now she's figuring out what am I going to do next. Doesn't really needs to earn some income, going to get some Social Security, so that will replace some of her lost income. But more than that, she doesn't want to just sit home and watch TV. She's not ready for that. She's active. She's young. She's in good health. So she wants to go out and do something and be productive and meet people. How She's do you, transitioning. How do you find? What is it just Mary Kay? I mean, there's a two or three we all know of, Amway. Or you, you, how did you find your network marketing opportunity? And how did you how did you, how did you find your community? Because that's yeah, what this is. That, right. That's what I hear you're saying. Yeah. There it's go. basically a community. So how did how did you oh, find well, your, your niche, so your community? I thought I'm a very spiritual person, and I had always wanted to get in on the silver game, but I thought it was too much money for me. And so as my income was dipping down in the other career, I started praying and asking for guidance, and mm. I was... Um, I said, I will be open because I tend to get really laser focused in whatever I do. And I put the blinders on because, you know, here's the thing. We all walk around saying we got too much on our plate. We don't have right. time to look at this or that. And so, so many things come by. And I'm not saying to say yes to everything that comes by, but we do have to have a yes. Op- we have to be able to say yes to the universe. And so I said, I was shown the book by Robert Kiyosaki, and immediately I, w- I got that that meant I need to be open to something new showing up that I'm not normally going to say yes to. And then within two weeks, I heard about this program, and it just made sense to me. Because for me, this vehicle is about precious metals, which is a hard asset. It's something that goes up in value, and it is, in contrary to most network marketing products, it's cheaper than anywhere else on the planet. And all the different things they had thought about, low qualifiers, it just was the perfect fit. I thought that I had to, you know, invest five to ten grand to get in on the silver game. And it turns out all I have to do is start with a membership like Costco. And then if I want to start buying just $20 a month, I can. And um, wow. Wow. I recently ranked up to one of the um, highest ranks in the company that's allowing me to bring in an income in my mid-50s within just two and a half years of completely changing my career. I'm now eligible to make up to 3500 a week. Now, so you're, so you're saying your gender has nothing to do with your income potential? Not in network you, marketing. Be, yeah, being a woman has nothing to do with it. That it's like, it has nothing to do. You can make as much money as you desire, just based on your development and your mindset. But one more question, and we we're down to our last couple of minutes here. Do you have to come in with a network of people? I'm assuming like the old Amway model. If you didn't know a lot of people, they say we'll sell to your friends and family and whatnot. Well, that burns out real quickly. You know, how do you build the network to big enough to and to to present these products or is it all about just bringing other people in and hoping that they'll sell something and then you you earn a commission off what they sell well i can only tell you my experience so my experience with silver is very silver and gold is easy because some of the other industries are so oversaturated no you do not have to hound um, your family and friends um, because what happens is my father uh had been involved in the early generations and so every time there was a relative day everyone was just avoiding him right. so a lot of people right. don't want to talk to right. and friends and so um with gold and silver you just have to carry a little in your pocket and you let it speak for itself you flip it around most people under the age of 50 have never even touched silver before because they started making the coins as nickel back in the 60s and so um it fascinates people it's bling they're naturally attracted to it and then you just explain the monetary system, which most people, I won't go into, most people don't even understand that the dollar is shrinking in their pocket. 
But the beauty of all of this, let me just say, is that no matter if you're a woman or man, but especially woman, as we're getting older, in this kind of a vehicle, you are never obsolete. You just share what you believe in, how it's changed your life, and that's going to affect, it's going to resonate with some. And there's a saying, some will, some won't, so what? Just like Mm. anything that you're passionate about, if I offer you candy and you tell me no, I'm not going to be upset about it. So it's just the same thing. You just share your story along the way, and there will be people that say yes. Well, and there right. will be people that want to also share. You've certainly hit a, a struck a chord in my life here, because that's the fear of all of us aging baby boomers, that at some point we're going to be obsolete if we're not already, uh, that we're just going to all end up working at Walmart and uh, or asking if you want fries with that order. Uh, and that's a fear. That's a fearful. Uh, that's an exaggeration, but it's a. I think it's a real exaggeration that we all have. We're gonna. We're we're not going to be useful anymore. We're going to be obsolete. And what you're saying resonates. How do people reach you or find out more about what you're talking about as we come to the end here? They could reach me on my website, which is Silver Stasher. S T A S H E R dot com. Silver Stasher dot com. Okay. And how okay. did how did you meet? I know Tyrone's been blowing this horn for a while here, and I'm starting to listen here loud and clear. You know, this <laughs> network marketing might be the answer we're all looking for. How do they reach you, Tyrone, if they want to learn more about your ideas and advice? Oh, they're going to go. They're probably going to go to www.closingthewealthgap.com or closingthewealthgap.us. www.closingthewealthgap.us or tyronefrench.com. Well, I'm starting to believe that you really can close the wealth gap. Too many of us for too long have just accepted that uh, we're behind and we're never going to catch up. And it sounds well, Paul, like there are ways to to, uh, to do that. We're living in a new economy. I, I call it a yo-yo economy. You're on your own. So you have to think creatively to, to put your plan in place to whereas you're focused on your, long, your longevity now. You can't, the mindset cannot be you're working and making other people wealthy. That doesn't work. You have to turn that around and create wealth for yourself and for ge- and generational wealth for your family. Well, I'm I'm going to listen eagerly each and every uh, show as you pop up new ideas like this one you've been talking about. So thank you so very much for both of you for coming on here today. Here, outstanding. Hey, thanks, Don. Thanks, Paul. It, it has been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the choice is yours. Do you continue to live in fear and watch the gap get wider? Or do you take action? Tune in each and every week. We bring you new ideas on how to close the wealth gap. Right here in Orange County's only community wave radio station, OCTalkRadio.net.